Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived four equally beautiful young princesses who dreamed of ranking everything. But only one would be chosen to become the rank king. I want to be a rank king. Shut up, YV. I'm right. You're wrong. Shut up. It's my show. Today we're ranking all of the official Disney princesses. Today I'm joined by my High Princess Court. Hello, my name is YB, Princess of Seoul. I like 3D princesses. What? You only like the recent princesses? Yeah. How old are you? My name is Caitlin Burke, and I hail from Chandler, Arizona. I am passionate about powerful princesses. I'm Alexandria. I hail from Studio City, and I like the princesses with the pretty dresses. And I'm your rank king, King Eugenia, hailing from the beautiful, exotic kingdom of Texas. Now, this is a court of the highest order. We will be open to discussing and debating the placement of these princesses. But in the end, my rank will reign supreme. For ranking, we have three criteria to judge these princesses. Number one, character. Who are they? What's their personality? Number two, story. What do they do in the film? Where do they go? Do they grow or do they stay the same? Criteria three, princess power. What is the legacy of this princess? How does it affect young girls and boys out there? What are they beyond the film? There are 14 total, and we're gonna rank them from best to worst. And we can also talk about their gowns. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this is a custom-made Mulan outfit I wore for Halloween last year. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to vote her number one. It only means I probably will. But even if I did, I'm right, you're wrong, shut up. What key were y'all in? We're starting way back in 1937, the beginning of the golden age of Disney, with our first princess, Snow White from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The princess icon of Disney Studios, the first to launch all of these other princesses. What do we think about her character? She's not my favorite, but she's not the worst either. Yeah, I don't think she has a very distinct personality, and she kind of ran away from stuff, but she also made a life for herself with the dwarves. Like, didn't she just basically clean their house? Yeah, but they were just like seven dirty guys living in filth, and so <laughs> she came and like, made, a, <laughs> made a house into a home, mm -hmm. and also gave them friendship. So this was the 30s. So, you know, maybe her form of empowerment was Washing seven dudes' laundry. Snow White has a very annoying voice. <laughs> Specifically. Very shrill, very bird-like. And she is, though, waiting for her prince. They get together in the end, but they don't really talk to each other. Yeah, they we don't see any of that other. relationship develop. Yeah. He straight up kisses a dead girl. Yeah. What is the most helpless you can make a female character? Yeah. Dead. Do you guys remember the um, Evil Queen, who I love the Evil Queen way more. This is a good example of a villain that I was like way more yeah. aligned with, because she had Attitude, mirror, who's prettier than me? I'm a fucking killer. <laughs> it's like Naomi Campbell and Tyra Banks. <laughs> you feel for Tyra, but oh I get God. where Naomi's coming from. I think we all agree Tyra Banks <laughs> should go. No. Well, we're gonna put her like here just, yes, just, yeah. just to have her. Yeah. We're gonna we'll keep her here right now. Yeah. She's not last like, yet, but we, we we know Snow White in, in her era. She did the best she could. Yeah. Next up. Entering the Silver Age of Disney Animation, Cinderella. This was one of my um, classics as a child watching old Disney movies. Yeah. She was kind of boring for me. Really? As the Cheetah her. Girls would say, I don't want to be no Cinderella. <laughs> sitting in a dark, cold, dusty cellar. Speaking of which, do you remember the Brandy version of Cinderella? Yes. yes. I, uh, yes. How, how, how could you forget? Houston, not and good. the prince was in Asian. Disney lost a lot of money during wartime, during the 40s, so then uh, Cinderella was a movie that really launched it back into being lucrative. What I like about Cinderella is that she's clearly in a position from the get-go where you sympathize with her. Indentured servitude yeah. by her wicked stepsisters and her wicked stepmom. Then she 
gets mice to make clothes for her. Yeah, and she yeah. hangs out with them. It's like when and, Tom Hanks is on the and island Ventures. and he made Wilson. Yeah, yeah. He made a friend. yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Like if you read the old fairy tales, it's like actually meant to be like she's crazy. She's crazy. Yeah. So all all Disney princesses are crazy because they all talk to animals. Yeah. Well, I mean, because they've all been through a lot. True. They've seen some shit. You know. <laughs> you know, fun fact: when I was a child, I really thought I could talk to birds. Cinderella has a good <laughs> voice. So yeah, it's very lofty. Love. It's more alto, it's, yeah. really, it's really pleasant. But the story is that her fairy godmother comes, mm -hmm. saves her to go to the ball where the prince falls in love with her. Mm -hmm. Then he loses her, only to find the glass slipper, and then uh, scours the kingdom to find who it fits. Mm -hmm. Which seems strange because I feel like there has to be like a uh, hundred girls with the same shoe size. <laughs> I know, yeah. yeah, so yeah. That's yeah. Very true. Also, her like, face wasn't covered. She didn't have like a... <laughs> Like a Batman mask on. Yeah. You know? It's like we know we know who this girl was. Listen, it's the Superman rule. You put on glasses, you look totally different. She went from a glamorous, bedazzled jewel to someone in like anthropology. She and was queer-eyed. Yeah. She was queer-eyed into oh success. My now I want to watch The Fairy Godmother replayed by Jonathan Van Ness. This pumpkin is gonna be a gorgeous carriage. Another another <laughs> Cinderella story. <laughs> She seems like a, an improvement when it comes to, you know, recognizing what a female character can have. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna, let's just balance it out. Yeah. Let's balance it out and put her over here right now. Now into 1959, we have Princess Aurora, otherwise known as Sleeping Beauty. Otherwise known as the worst. She's asleep the whole movie. Yeah. You think about her three fairy godmothers, like they carried the movie. Yeah. She's the just whole there. I think she has like the most like, interesting, artful like design to her as a princess. Oh, you wanna know a fun fact? They modeled her movement and body off of Audrey Hepburn. She's nice. She's nice, she can also sing to animals. Like you'd invite her out, but she's not like your first choice. All right, for the story, it seems like she's asleep for most of the time. Princess power? What effect did this have on society other than telling girls you need to wait, be asleep, maybe in a vegetative state? until some man comes along and saves Be careful you. of a needle. Yeah, like it's like literally like it's sharp. almost, it's kind of, it's it's creepy. A yeah. little, maybe a little rapey. Are we just dropping, are we dropping Aurora down? I think so. I mean, she's real pretty, but that can only get you so far when you're, when you're dead you're for sleeping. most of the movie. <laughs> we may have to exile her. We are jumping decades into the future because Disney went through a lot of shit between Sleeping Beauty and The Little Mermaid in 1989. It took them that long to get another princess film. This is the beginning of the Disney Renaissance, which for many of us was our childhoods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's a fun girl, you know? It's like, yeah, like she's she got really a lot of personality. the story. She has a great singing voice. Yeah. She's kind of funny, like yeah. a little quirky. Yeah. I she's love it. Adventurous. Yes. Even though she is a little dumb for, you know, selling her voice just so she yeah. can be with a guy. So, what about Princess Power? What's her legacy? She actually, like, leaves behind, like, a, a fairly good message for young girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like she's the first princess, though, that, like, has hopes and dreams. True. She wants to see the world. Yeah. She's, like, a little rebellious with her family. She's mm -hmm. like, Dad, you don't get to tell me what to do. You kind of start empathizing with King Triton a little bit. Why are you going to run away and give a witch your voice? Just for legs? Yeah. But at least she had aspirations. She doesn't just want to go to the surface for Prince Eric, she wants to go yeah. to yeah. walk around and like see the people. Yeah. Like, what they do. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she is primarily motivated to, to leave her entire life and all that she knows mm -hmm. for those that she doesn't know, for one dude that she saw once. But he's really hot. But he is really hot. She met him and she's like, oh, I want to see what else is up there, yeah. you know? Or down there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And you know what, she got thingamabobs, 20. And you know what that gets her? Fast track to the top, baby. Yay! Oh, my crown! Yay! Closely after Little Mermaid, we have Beauty and the Beast with Belle, 1991. Her character's great, I feel like. She's an intellectual. Yeah, she intellectual. loves to read. Gaston, the hottest guy in the town, doesn't care about him. Yeah, doesn't appeal like, to her at fuck all. Fuck that guy. <laughs> and then yeah. she goes into the forest to save her dad. Which automatically gives her points in my book. I think yeah. her being the weirdo for being smart is yeah. super relatable, even though she's yeah. like obviously super gorgeous. Yeah. The second half of the movie like becomes like very sad because it's like it's basically Stockholm yeah. syndrome. Yeah, she falls in love with her, her captor. captor. Yeah, that's why in these movies you have something called a montage where they sing a song and you're like, whoa, Belle suddenly likes this dude because he yeah. eats. Because like, now they're eating yeah. soup together in a funny yeah. way. And hey, playing in the snow. We're playing in the snow. He likes little birdies, and you're like, wow, I'm on board with this romance. Mm -hmm. This kidnapper's yeah, dope. 
Very but that's much. the cool part is like he wasn't like a, a hot beast. Excuse me, the beast was hot. In fairy tale times, he was he not was the monster. traditional hot. Yeah. Yes. yeah. He was hotter what than what when he said turned into a man. Yeah. yeah. I was like, who's this guy? Yeah, he looked better as a beast. It's a good lesson because she fell in love with his heart mm. like an intellectual would, and she wasn't distracted by vanity. Or maybe she was distracted and, and she just liked that beast oh. look. By he his hot so furry evil. self. I also relate to the fact that she's in a tiny town and she's looking to get out somewhere to like find a place that accepts her for who she is. It's similar to Little Mermaid but way more clear. Ariel, I feel like it's more kind of selfish driven even though she has good intentions but she does it for herself. I guess Belle was far more selfless throughout her yeah, story because was, it was yeah. to save her father mm -hmm. and then really to save the beast in yeah. the end. Does Belle go higher or lower than Ariel? I put her lower. I think lower. I think she should technically be hired because she's smarter and she's brave, mm -hmm. but Ariel just had really good songs. <laughs> yeah. I think Belle is a superior princess to Ariel. No! And I'm gonna put her above the fish girl. Staying in the Disney Renaissance era, we have Princess Jasmine from Aladdin. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I love Jasmine. Yes. I love Jasmine. Cause she's like the first hot one. Like all these <laughs> ladies are beautiful, but like she's yeah, hot. She's hot. Yeah, one. she is hot. She voices her opinions. Yes. But she's not whiny like Ariel. Like Ariel's like, but daddy, I love him. Jasmine's like, I am not a prize to be won. She's supposed to be forced into it, like an arranged marriage, yeah. right? And then she's like, I'm not doing that shit. I don't love yeah. that guy. Mm -hmm. And she knew Jafar was bad before anyone else. She has good instincts. She really is defying a lot of these yeah. cultural gender roles that were placed on her while looking hot as fuck. Everything she did in her power that she could was to defy the cage that she was put yeah. in. I think that's really yeah, honorable. Yeah, she's really strong. She was the, one of the first princesses that like was a true hero figure. Yeah, she was never really a damsel in distress. Yeah. Jasmine is also the first princess who is of color. That sort of princess power was alone like huge. Yeah. Yeah, because I think every girl of color I knew was then, it was kind of like being the scary spice in a Spice Girls dress oh my up. God, yes. Everyone was Jasmine. I think I'm gonna slide Jasmine wow. up top. Woo! I don't know, I just always, you did it. I think Jasmine also stands the test of time. I can still feel her standing up herself today or way back when this was set in Agrabah. Staying in the Disney Renaissance in the 90s, I believe this is Kaylin's birth year. Maybe. 1995. <laughs> is it? I don't know. That's crazy. <laughs> Pocahontas, 1995. Pocahontas is drop dead gorgeous. gorgeous. And the hair. Yeah. And I feel like she has to be ripped to be able to run around the forest and like oh, yeah. down waterfalls. The She's way super she does. fit. <laughs> I remember running around as a kid like, like touching rocks and trees and then yeah. thinking that I could talk to them because Pocahontas <laughs> said I could. Her character is unshakable. Like, yeah. Mature, elegant, right. all about connecting with nature and appreciating your family and Yeah, she has like a very true weird. north. Like mm -hmm. she's like yeah. values are like super secure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she has she good knows, judgment, she knows good who morals. She is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she didn't end up with the guy in the end. She she yeah. saves him even though they're invaders and then at the end she doesn't stay with him. She's like, yeah, that's true. bye, bitch. Yeah. It's kind of like Bachelor in Paradise. Like they had this whole great <laughs> journey together mm -hmm. and they loved each other, but in the end it wasn't right. Yeah, the story leaves room to be desired, super historically inaccurate, especially since it's based on a real person. John Smith never had a romantic relationship with her. She was 10 when John Smith landed there. But yeah. Pocahontas as a character really carries the film and I think the, the yeah. princess power. You know, I think I'm gonna have to put Pocahontas below <gasps> in top three. I, I think so. Oh, I really? This this whole order is just <laughs> anxiety. I think so. I think as a princess, she's like way high. But I think as just a general legacy thing for considering the entire film, yeah. it's lower than these three films. Really? Yeah, for sure. It's a girl who dressed as a boy, Mulan, 1998. <laughs> yeah. Woo! I love Mulan. Put her at the top. Yeah. 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 We don't need to talk about we it. We don't have to talk. <laughs> she transcends gender norms. In a Disney film, my God, she becomes a warrior to protect her family, to protect her country. Without glory, without selfishness, she has all the qualities of a true leader. She literally leads an army and defeats hundreds of thousands yeah. of Huns. My God. There's a lot of Asians on this panel. I know she inspired us, but she should inspire every young person, yeah, especially no. young girls. She didn't need no man. Yeah, she became the man, and then she did better than <laughs> the man. That is crazy, yeah. and especially for an Asian woman, yes. especially for a storyline that became like iconic to queer people. Mm -hmm. Like This was revolutionary so much more than I think Disney even understood it at the yeah, time. Yeah, I don't think they even knew what they, they were doing. Know. They did not, not intend this, but they hit like all the marks. I think it's less of a fairy tale and less magical, but also the being realistic and like 
Just her, how she transforms and makes it like a fairy tale. Yeah. I also love that her love storyline is more of just her having a secret crush on Shang Li the whole time. Like it wasn't a motivator for her. Yeah. She wasn't doing this for him. She wasn't doing it to get him. She yeah. was doing it for her father. And Shang Li totally was into her as a dude, so that's why this was even better. Yeah. He's like super on the bike train, and I'm yeah. all about He's that. He's questioning yeah. himself the whole time. Oh yeah, when, he, when <laughs> she hits him and he falls to the ground, he goes like, Oh, I'm like, wow, he's like, man, I wish I could get on that in a different type of way. Some more exercises in the bedroom, you know what I'm saying? Well, let's put her to the top. Princess Mulan's going to the power. top. Princess power forever. Oh, you don't need no man. You don't need no man. And you can wear a ponytail. Be a man. <laughs> With all the force of a great typhoon and all the strength of a raging fire, mysterious as the dark side of the moon. We're in the current era of Disney. Renaissance revival. Woo! With Princess Tiana from The Princess and the Frog, 2009. The first black Disney princess. Mm -hmm. She's the only businesswoman in the entire princess yes. canon. That's really important yes. to say. She found independence and strong-mindedness through just the, the will of what she desired to do in life. Even when they introduced the male character, like mm. she did not give a fuck about him. Mm. She was like, not here for the bullshit. She's like, yeah, great, I get it, you're rich. I'm working on my other things over here. Like, I don't need yeah. you to like mess this up for me. Now, one thing I do take some points off for is that she does spend a large part of the film as a frog. Obviously I'm biased and she is my top. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of times I've dressed up as Tiana for Halloween. Oh, you look so good. Countless, yeah. Slutty Tiana looks great. <laughs> Let's put a picture of Slutty Tiana up right now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the first time that I was like, really felt represented on screen yeah. in Disney, but then it's like they had to go and fuck it up with that. She's below Jasmine for me. No, 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 no. I, I personally love her character, but her story as a whole in the movie, mm -hmm. I think Jasmine was stronger in her own Aww. movie. Yeah. If you look at her as a frog too, because she was herself as a frog, she was making shit happen. Mm -hmm. And still saves the day, even when she's a frog. I think she has no, to go no, 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 no. I'm sorry, no, Kaylin. No, 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 But no, the ranking no. has spoken. Moving into the CGI era. Rapunzel from Tangle, 2010. They didn't name it Rapunzel because they wanted boys to see it, so they called it Tangled. They got all the women in the Disney animation department to vote on what they found the most attractive in hot male celebrities <laughs> and qualities, and that's how they designed Flynn Rider. Yeah, he was like a hottie. They have like a little soul patch though. Yeah, the soul patch kind of threw off. Like, why? They could have done it without the soul patch. Yeah. She's like basically trapped inside a tower her whole life. With her long so hair. So I guess Disney was like, how do we make her capable Strong. and inspirational. Yeah, they were trying. They tried. And essentially, that whole story, the prince mm -hmm. just saves her. Exactly. With her goddamn yeah. hair. Exactly. So they give her like a fun personality, they give her Mandy Moore's voice, they give her a pan that she can hit people with. Yeah, they give her like motives, mm -hmm. but like overall I feel like she's still not that strong. Like, no, and I don't think she's that relatable. But I do like that she gets this like cute little like shag at the end, this little brunette shag. <laughs> I didn't like that. When I saw that in theaters, the little girl next to me uh -huh. wearing a princess dress watching it starts crying and the mom goes, what's wrong? Mom, she's ugly now. Oh. I agree, she's kind of uglier. <laughs> She looked great with that short little, you know, Dorothy Hamill cut. But for story, she's kind of a prisoner of her own fable. I'm gonna start pushing her a little lower. Yeah, I might even push her. She's lower, even though I love this. I put her below Cinderella above Snow White. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. 2012, the first Pixar princess, Merida from Brave. Here she is, Merida. How do we feel about her character? I thought she was really strong. Um, she really carried the movie, but I thought she was annoying. But she had the same strain that Princess Jasmine had, which was she was in royalty, yeah. and she didn't want to be stuck under the tradition of marrying a man and being sold yeah. off. So that's where her real strength comes from. Also, she's a great archer. Like, yeah. that's the coolest thing. She's super athletic. I'm gonna quote Keith about the story. So Keith, in our podcast, The Tripod, went off about the storyline because <laughs> you watch the trailer and you're like, if you could change your fate, would you? What? <laughs> I hate it, I was so mad. You think it's gonna be about this woman winning an archery competition yeah. against all the odds? No, it's about her family turning into bears. We have these expectations, like especially titling it Brave. Like you yeah. expect yeah. like this whole like- They really should have titled it Bear. <laughs> bear. If you could change into a bear, <laughs> would you? I mean, that's kind of what it ended up being. Yeah. She feels thoroughly modern because of her intentions, mm -hmm. her motivations, but the fact that she did not win over the three women on this panel from the movie, means that maybe there were certain things that were not quite perfect with the story or her princess power. Yeah. I'm gonna put Merida below Cinderella, but above Rapunzel, just because of the strength of a character alone. We are now in 2013, and of course, one of Disney's biggest hits ever, we have two princesses, nay, a princess and a queen. Princess Anna and Queen Elsa 
from Frozen. They are the two characters that I've included that are not part of the official Disney Princess lineup. The merchandising is so popular for these two mm -hmm. that if you put them in the same lineup, kids would buy their stuff yeah. and ignore the other things. It's all about merch, y'all. They went with this whole red herring storyline of Anna being into mm -hmm. the classic, I need to be rescued by a prince and get married. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it turned out that he was the villain. And then it became essentially kind of like the love story between two sisters, like yes. their bond, which is very unique. I like that Elsa's like kind of storyline is like she's essentially scared because like she has something different about her yeah. Yeah. that is like not socially accepted basically like, that's like what the whole like her parents are like put these gloves on because you're too scary yeah, yeah. your powers are too great yeah and then and that's why let it go her, yeah. is a great moment yeah. even though the it song is. people got tired of it but it's like her being like yeah. i'm gonna fuck it not only am i gonna show you that i could freeze your ass off yeah. look at this dress yeah the princess power is really good here yeah i feel like because like the message is like your strength is your beauty elsa overall is a more refreshing type of princess yeah because you've never seen someone who has essentially been the holder of great power who has had to deal with it, embrace it, and then channel it. I love that Elsa weirdly has been what a lot of us wanted, which is an anti-hero. Like right. she's yeah. like a uh, a I'm villain who is funneled through a princess lens. She does become a villain for a second when she's attacking her. Yeah, her. Oh, they yeah. give her that yeah. whole. That was great. I yeah. loved that. I think oh, Elsa's sure. more princess power, while Anna's more relatable because she grows into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. If Anna was just in her story by herself without Elsa, mm -hmm. she would not stand up as much of as an interesting character. So a lot of it is in relation to the sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put Elsa. No, don't do it. Do below it. Tiana okay, thank you. and uh -huh. above Belle. <laughs> like, I need to watch that movie. Thank <laughs> God. Really I'm putting on a below Cinderella. We have one more princess left. Are y'all ready? The most recent one to be inducted, Moana. Woo! From 2016. I Man, love Moana. Who doesn't Moana's like great. Moana? She's the first Disney princess with what one would call more realistic body type. Yeah, they made her like they drew Nani. More realistic legs. Almost like the first time she started talking, you could feel she was fully realized. Yeah, she was really relatable. She just wants to explore. While earlier princesses were saved yeah. to get there, the newer princesses are self-enacting that. They're the catalysts of their own fate. Moana made me crap. Yeah. In her heart, she's like trying to help the island. Yeah. She doesn't know it yet. She's a kid. Yeah. So it has that to same like Little Mermaid feel. Yeah. yeah. And then it's also got like the family values attached to it. Right. I think yeah. she's just a really fully realized version of what I would consider like a successful modern Disney princess. Yeah. I think she just hit all the things on the head. It's I'm putting yeah. Moana above Tiana. No! Wow. Yeah. Like, I am so listen. upset. Tiana was a frog for half the movie. Yeah. Okay. And but Moana did all no. that shit by herself. I would love to close ranks by allowing one last argument from each rank princess to tell me should I move a certain princess somewhere else. My closing rank argument is that Ariel and Belle should be switched. First of all, Ariel is a mermaid, which is awesome. First. End of <laughs> argument. End of argument. I know that Belle had better intentions because she went to save her dad. Ariel's story, I feel like it's just more interesting because she has underwater and above water. She has this really cool villain with her, while Belle's villain is more of just like a guy. I would watch The Little Mermaid way more than Beauty and the Beast. I'm gonna double down on this. I cannot get past the Stockholm Syndrome. I'm like, it's so sad. I feel like it just creates an unhealthy mental narrative for a little girl. I think. Pocahontas should be higher. She was really, really strong, chose her family and her people over John Smith, and she made sure that he like got out fine and always did what was best for everyone else. After hearing your arguments, particularly since you all grew up with these princesses, I agree, let's put Ariel above Belle. And because we are a community of princesses who support each other, four equally beautiful feminine princesses, I'll put Pocahontas above Belle. Yay. Yay! That is it. Woo! That is our final rank. At the top, no surprise there, there's a spoiler that is basically what I'm wearing, Mulan. And at the very bottom, we have Princess Aurora, otherwise known as Sleeping Beauty, otherwise known as didn't do jack shit during her movie. We're right, you're wrong, shut up. It was still very bad. It was, it was so bad. bad. I lost it. <laughs>
I can only take so many baby face CGI girls what? for so long. Okay. They look like baby people. Give me a little more of these. I just want to see some yeah. 2D hand drawings. Thank you, ranking a spoken. Like I'm right, you're wrong, shut up. <laughs>